Hi, this is Alexander Kolovoz with Teradata Product Engineering. Welcome to another edition of the Teradata Tech Bytes. This is part 3 in the series of Using Python with Teradata Vantage. In these series, the key takeaway is to illustrate operating with Python on the Vantage platform from your client with a Teradata package for Python Teradata ML. In the present part 3, we investigate modeling with Vantage Analytic Functions and we will be overviewing the model cataloging feature to save, administer and reuse the models you build in Vantage. In the demo, we will be showing briefly, we build on the use case and material that were presented in the preceding part 2 of this series. If you might be unable to follow the present part 3 demo, we recommend that you first view part 2 for an overview of the underlying use case and the tasks completed to this point. We will now proceed with the demonstration this part 3 of the Using Python with Teradata Vantage Tech Byte series. In the present video, we will be using this Jupyter Notebook to demonstrate the following features. We will be demonstrating how to invoke and use Vantage Analytic functions through their Teradata ML Python wrapper functions, how to use options to display the actual SQL query submitted by Teradata ML to the database. We'll be displaying how to persist analytical results in Teradata ML data frames as database tables, and how to train and score models in database with Vantage analytic functions. Specifically, in our use case, we'll be using the XGBoost and Decision Forest analyses, where we will be employing Vantage Machine Learning Engine Analytic Functions to predict the propensity of bank customers to open a new credit card account. The example will further demonstrate a comparison of these two models via confusion matrix analysis. Finally, we will see how to save, inspect, retrieve and reuse models created with Vantage Analytic Functions by means of the Teradata ML model cataloging feature. Please keep in mind that the model cataloging feature does not come pre-built in Vantage or Teradata ML. To set up model cataloging on your target advanced SQL engine, visit first the Teradata ML page on the website downloads.teradata.com and ask your database administrator to install and enable this feature on your Vantage system. So let's get started with initial steps and uh, first, these include loading the libraries that we're going to be using. And next, we will need to create a Vantage connection to the target advanced SQL engine uh, shown in this block. We start with the analytic dataset, or ADS, that we prepared in the previous part 2 after our data transformations on the initial customer, accounts and transactions tables in the connected database. So, in this first block, we create a Teradata ML data frame from the ADS table AK TBV2 ADS PI, and we will be displaying a, a small data sample. Our goal is to investigate the propensity of the hypothetical financial institution customers to open new credit card accounts. For the modeling tasks ahead, we will need to invoke now the sample function of the Teradata ML data frame so as to perform a 60-40 split to the ADS data frame and create a training and test subsets. So the sample function results in creating a TD train test ADS Teradata ML data frame uh, that uh, essentially has one additional column sample ID. So we create in this way new Teradata ML data frames from these new subsets. As you see, by specifying with the sample ID values which rows will go to each subset. And then we persist these uh, new Teradata ML data frames as tables in the connected database with a copy to SQL function. Eventually, we create Teradata ML data frames for each one of these new tables so that we can handle their data in the following steps. Let's execute this block. The first segment illustrates using Vantage Analytic functions in the machine learning engine to build models for prediction of the credit card account index variable, the CC account INDX. 
we examine two analytical approaches, one where we use an XGBoost algorithm, and then an approach based on decision forests. Before the analytical part, we first here activate the TerdataMill flag that enables displaying of the submitted SQL queries to the connected database. This is a convenient utility option if you wish to see the actual code that gets executed in Vantage. So in the initial XGBoost approach, we begin by expressing the formula to train a model with. This is the formula stated here. And then within the same block, you see that uh, we use the XGBoost TerdataML function. Now, this function resides in the machine learning engine, and the calling statement from the Python function XGBoost, that is a wrapper to the machine learning engine XGBoost function, includes the training parameters we want to send to the XGBoost function. And you see here, most prominently, we ask for a binomial classification analysis with a modest complexity level. Observe that the training function returns a model object that we name TD XGBoost model. Let's execute this block. And you see here also the SQL uh, query that is submitted. Now, once model training is complete, we invoke the corresponding XGBoost predict function with the model name that we just trained and the testing TerdataML data frame as input. We further wish to persist the results as a table in the database. So uh, first what we do is we drop any result table if previously existing, and then we save the prediction in the TD XGBoost predict result or data ML data frame. And we use the to SQL method to save its contents as table AK TBV2 Pi XGBoost scores. Eventually, the task is completed by creating a TerdataML data frame out of the new table with the predicted scores. Let us execute this block. And now we can continue since the analysis is complete. Please keep in mind that depending on the uh, analysis complexity and algorithm used, it might take a little while for these uh, queries to execute in the database. We see the prediction result here, a sample of the uh, output uh, TerdataML data frame TD XGBoost scores with scoring information. In the second approach, we repeat the training and scoring task, this time with decision for its algorithm. This block here invokes the decision forest analytical function in the machine learning engine with the same model formula and input training data frame and places the outcome in the object TD decision forest model. So training is complete. In the next block, we present a different feature of decision forest analysis in Vantage. You see this function here, Decision Forest Evaluator, which returns an object that illustrates the variable importance according to the model training results. The outcome is a table with importance ranking of the independent variables. The statements have been executed, and you can see the resulting table here. Eventually, we call the decision forest predict function on the trained model and the testing to data ML data frame. We similarly save the decision forest prediction in the database as table AK TBV2 pi decision forest scores, and then create the data ML data frame out of the new table with the predicted scores. Let's execute this block as well. We are complete. And we're ready to go into the last section of the modeling analysis. In this last section, we illustrate a way to compare the two modeling approaches on the basis of their confusion matrices. First, we build the confusion matrix for the XGBoost approach by feeding the machine learning engine analytic function confusion matrix 
with the TDXGBoost scores to our data and our data frame. The output comprises of a count table, a stat table, and an accuracy table as shown here. Then we build a confusion matrix for the decision forest approach by similarly applying the confusion matrix function onto the TD random forest scores to our data ML data frame. And we have the results ready for this confusion matrix analysis as well. Upon receiving these results too, the tables from the two confusion matrix analysis indicate in this example an overall comparable performance by the two modeling approaches. We are ready to continue with a second segment in our demonstration where we illustrate the model cataloging feature into our data ML. We start by showing how to save models you have created with a save model function. In this notebook block, we save both models that we trained earlier in the previous segment. Observe that we must identify the models with the model argument, yet we will be handling the model themselves by the names we provide them by means of the names argument. For your convenience, you can optionally provide a brief model description with a description argument. Let us execute this block. Upon execution, the system reports the action outcome, and we see that both models were eventually persisted successfully. Now, to inspect the available models that may exist on the server, use the list models function shown here. Let us execute this one. So, upon execution, you see uh, some important basic information about each model shown in the list, such as the algorithm that a model is based on, the engine where it was created with, the model generating client, which in this case is Teradata ML, the database user who created the model, and the creation timestamp. Further on, you can request detailed information about a model with the describe model function. In this instance, we requested detailed information about the decision forest model. And as you see, the reported outcome is a full model description that includes both the basic information that we uh, saw in the listing function as well as all related model technical information shown in these subsequent tables. Now, if you're on the consuming end, the function retrieve model shown here requires a model name to invoke it from an existing catalog, and the function loads the model for you into a model object. We see here that we retrieve the decision forest model and save it into the TD retrieve DF model uh, model object. Let us execute this block. When you are ready to share a model that you own with colleagues in the database, then you can use the publish model function shown here that allows you to specify the grantee level for a specific model name and also inform your colleagues regarding the model status in the corresponding status argument. Current status options include the model being in development, a candidate model, active, in production, or retired. Let us execute this block too. And finally, if you no longer need a model, then you can delete a model with a delete model function as shown in this block. In this case, in this example, we delete both models that we created earlier in this demo. And with these confirmations, essentially we get verification that the delete tasks were completed successfully. With these tasks, we conclude our demonstration for the part three of the using Python with third data Vantage Tech Byte series. Let us, in the end, exit the session by executing the teradataml remove context function.
We would like to thank you for staying with us for the part three presentation and demo, and we wish you a wonderful rest of your day.